Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at the fight or flight response. So this occurs in mammals when they're presented with a very dangerous situation in which they either need to fight their way out or run away in order to survive. And this is triggered by both nerves and hormones. So the nerves involved here is in the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system can trigger the adrenal medulla to release norepinephrine and also epinephrine, which are neurotransmitters but can act as hormones. So they're released into the bloodstream, whereby they impact upon different parts of the body to trigger that fight or flight response. Another hormone that's released is ACTH from the adrenal cortex. So all of these are involved with creating that fight or flight response. So here are some of the fight and flight responses that you need to be aware of. It's in a red box. It's taken directly from the MART scheme. So we need to increase our breathing rate so that we have more oxygen available for aerobic respiration to make ATP for muscle contraction. We also need to increase the diameter of our airway so we get a higher volume of oxygen into our lungs for the same reason. We need to increase the flow of blood to our skeletal muscles so we've got more oxygen available for aerobic respiration to make ATP for muscle contraction. It will also take away those waste products such as carbon dioxide from the muscles. It's going to cause our pupils to dilate to let in more light so we're able to be more aware of our surroundings and it's going to cause the liver to release more glucose which again is needed for aerobic respiration which the blood will take to the skeletal muscles. We also have adrenaline and adrenaline is a hormone which is produced from the adrenal medulla. It's produced when the body is under stress and it can trigger similar responses such as releasing more glucose from the liver from those hepatocytes within the liver. However, because adrenaline is a protein-based hormone, a peptide hormone, it cannot diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. So it has to trigger a response inside the cell by using the first messenger and second messenger response. So here's a, a diagram to show how this response works. So the first messenger in our particular example is adrenaline. Adrenaline is the hormone that acts as the first messenger. And what it does is it binds to a specific and complementary receptor within the membrane of the target cell. So in this particular example, it would be the hepatocytes within the liver. Now this receptor has a complementary and specific shape to adrenaline. So when they bind together, it triggers a response inside the cell by activating an enzyme called adenyl cyclase. So the enzyme adenyl cyclase then causes um cyclic AMP to form. Cyclic AMP is our secondary messenger here and our second messenger cyclic AMP will trigger a response inside the cell which in this case if it's hepatocytes being triggered by adrenaline would be to break down the stores of glycogen into glucose so that glucose can then be used and taken elsewhere in the body for aerobic respiration to make ATP normally for muscle contraction. So that's everything really that we need to know about the fight or flight response. If this video has helped, please like, share and subscribe and good luck with your exams.